Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video and in today's Kerbal Space Program video we're going to be constructing a cargo SSTO with inspiration drawn from the proposed Skylon design uh, which is just one of the you know more realistic SSTO designs that would be built in the real world should it ever happen probably unlikely to happen but you know it's one of the leading designs anyway regardless I'm going to be building a cargo SSTO again inspired by the Skylon but last time I designed a Skylon style SSTO I used the uh the Kerbal cargo SSTO standard of having it so it could just put one full orange tank in orbit. Generally the orange tank is considered as the marker of when an SSTO becomes a heavy lifter you know a heavy lift SSTO I guess. So I thought what about trying to make it a super heavy Skylon and by this I mean it can not just put one full orange tank into orbit but rather it can put two and a little bit more <laughs> full orange tanks into orbit whilst still retaining the sleek Skylon aesthetics. So that was the challenge I proposed in this video and that's what we're going to be doing I guess in this video. Now a super heavy lift launch vehicle is an actual term used in aerospace and all that so for those that don't know it's quite an interesting topic really you know space <laughs> as I'm sure most of you are probably aware if you play this video game come to think of it but anyway a super heavy lift launch vehicle for those that don't know is a rocket or anything I suppose capable of carrying more than 50 tons of payload into low earth orbit and what's interesting is that there's only one that actually exists at the moment and it's never flown and has never been planned to fly technically it's the Falcon Heavy it's the only rocket that exists at the moment that's in use at least uh, that can actually put a 50 ton plus payload into low earth orbit the reason I say it it hasn't and is never planned to be flown is because it can only do this if it either expends all three of its boosters or expends two of the three boosters the planned configuration is obviously to recover all three boosters uh, not always been the case so far uh, but the SpaceX as far as we know have no plans to launch the Falcon Heavy uh, in you know expending the first two boosters or expending all three boosters configuration there have of course been super heavy lift vehicles existing in the past uh, the most famous I guess would be the Saturn V which could put a whopping 140 tons into low earth orbit we also have the space shuttle technically because we have to include the launch of the actual orbiting space plane as well and then of course we have the Energia system designed by the Soviet Union um, again all of these are not in use anymore aside from obviously the Falcon Heavy but again that comes with its own caveats exciting times ahead coming up because obviously the space launch system and the SpaceX Starship are both going to be super heavy launch vehicles but you know that's all in the future for now and you know the future can't come around soon enough let's face it 2020 has been a bit of a a bit of a slow depressing year so far I can't I can't believe how far into the year we are we're already in May it feels like time is both crawling by but also flying by faster than light it's very it's very bizarre times we live in right now but as you can see we have now completed the construction of the super heavy Skylon space plane we can get ready to launch this thing and put our payload into orbit which as I said before is not just the, the two big orange tanks filled with fuel but we actually have a monopropellant tank a big battery and a probe and two big docking ports attached to the payload as well so it's a little bit more than the uh, the goal I set of just two big orange tanks filled with fuel and here we are now about to pitch off the runway unfortunately the KSC runway is not quite long enough for us to reach the speed needed for this thing to get off the ground without you know just flying off the end of the runway where the ground drops away and we can tilt up a little bit more aggressively I guess I could have done the uh, the Brad Wistance trick where we just move our craft to the land just next to the runway which is just as flat as the runway but there's a lot more of it and get up to take off speed that way but I don't know, it's fine it worked this way so I'm happy and we've got a payload to deliver into low curb in orbit gosh darn it uh, by the way, I'm, people are probably going to mention, and I guess I probably should mention this anyway, I'm calling this a super heavy Skylon, even though, you know, the super heavy term doesn't really translate exactly into Kerbal Space Program because things weigh differently in this game, and obviously the atmosphere of Kerbin is much more you know, easy to escape than the atmosphere of Earth, and obviously by extension it's much, much easier to put things in orbit in Kerbal Space Program. I mean, look how easy it is to make SSTOs, you know, SSTOs, are almost an impossibility at least in a practical sense on earth for now with our current technology we have proposals like the Sabre engine but all of that is hypothetical at the moment so 
you know, I kind of said, well, what is considered the standard of a heavy SSTO or a heavy lifting SSTO, I should say, in Kerbal Space Program? And I feel like the orange tank is usually considered the place marker of what makes an SSTO a heavy lifter. So I thought, let's just double it. And then I feel like I can kind of reasonably call this a super heavy lifter. You can go bigger. There is obviously the other orange tank now that we have another texture for the Curvodyne S3 14400 tank, I think. It used to be the biggest tank in the game before the Saturn V parts were added in the Making History DLC pack. But anyway, the reason I didn't use this orange tank rather than, you know, two of these smaller orange tanks is because these can actually fit in a Mark III cargo bay. We don't have any cargo bays that can adequate, well, that can accommodate at all. The, the bigger fuel tank diameter pieces. I guess we could put a fairing structure around it or just have it sat exposed to the atmosphere and just have it slung between two fuselages or have some sort of splitting space plane system where the nose of the space plane sits in front of the cargo and the rear of the space plane sits behind the cargo and then the cargo deploys and then the two parts of the space plane then join back up. It's something I've thought about doing actually for a while but all of this I don't really like it as much because I want to have you know, this payload would be protected from all the plasma and heating effects of the air on takeoff, which as you can see, is it's pretty toasty out there, to be honest. You may be wondering at this point, why have we got so much liquid fuel uh, compared to our oxidizer levels when we've only got rapiers to do the lifting and we need, you know, a lot of oxidizer for orbital flight, but oh, oh dear viewers, as you can see, we have the new, I don't know why this, I'm acting like this would be a surprise because you saw me doing this in the space plane hangar whilst I was building this crap, but I thought, you know what would be cool? If we had the nuclear engines sort of encased inside that cargo bay at the back of the craft, just to kind of aid the aerodynamicness of the space plane, and just, it looks pretty cool. I've never done this before, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the aesthetics of how it looks. We do still need to do quite a long oxidizer burn with this craft because the mass of the craft, or at least, you know, the mass of the payload in this craft is very, very heavy, and the nuclear engines just do not provide the necessary thrust to weight ratio to get us into orbit without a fairly long burn with our oxidizer. Uh, I don't, I try and reduce the amount of closed cycle burning with the rapiers as much as possible in my videos just because again it's very inefficient but in this case because it's such a heavy craft we have to do a very long burn with the rapiers with uh, you know in their closed cycle mode. But all over now we can just coast into orbit using those nuclear engines and my goodness We've got over. A, we've got about. We've got about a kilometre of delta V remaining. So lots and lots of room for manoeuvrability in terms of getting beyond low can, low Kerbin orbit. You know, we could always go to Minmus and drop the payload off. We we can't really circularize at Minmus very well, but you know, we can we can go we can go many places. Is what I'm trying to get at here, especially with. You know, a lot of cargo SSTOs don't need to carry the immense mass of two orange fuel tank. So, you know, if you're just putting a space lab into orbit or something like that, you probably have a lot more Delta V than what we have in this particular mission here. So we're going to go ahead and circularize and get ready to deploy the payload. Now it's this part in the video where I think I need to probably come clean about something. In fact, actually, before I do, I wanted to quickly comment on a slight error I made when building this. You can see the rear big S elevons don't actually work unless that rear cargo ramp is deployed, which is fine because when we need to re-enter the atmosphere we can just have the rear cargo bay open but like set the deploy limit to one so aesthetically it looks like it's shut and hopefully aerodynamic wise it's you know it's not the same as having it fully extended. I'm not actually sure if KSP considers the deploy limit when working out the aerodynamicness of a craft. Hopefully it does but I I'm not quite sure. So that's uh, one thing that kind of could have been improved with the design of this ship. Maybe there's another thing that needed improving here because I'm not sure what happened, but I couldn't get the payload clear of the SST. Like they're separated and it hasn't just redocked using that posterior docking port. And, you know, the RCS thrusters, I couldn't seem to, I don't know if it was stuck to something or what. So I just sort of cheated and used time warp so the vessels would just pass through each other. Guess that might be considered cheating, but I do not care because I feel like this should work and it doesn't really make sense to me why it doesn't. So I'm fine with this. And there is the payload there. And this is now the part where I said I was gonna come clean about something. I had bigger plans for this mission than what they eventually transpired to be. I wanted to then land the space plane back at the runway, we can refuel it and then put another payload 
inside the cargo bay and launch another thing and dock it to that orange tank that we just put in, or the double orange tank to be more precise, and make like a little space station using this SSTO. But things went wrong on the re-entry where literally, and I do not know why, I asked a few of my KSP YouTuber friends and I none of us could figure out why this was happening. The, the elevons of the craft just suddenly stopped doing what I wanted them to do. Like they would only ever pitch down. Like pressing S on my keyboard would make them pitch down and pressing W on my keyboard would make them pitch down. There was nothing I could seem to do. I literally tried everything. I tried, you know, uh, disabling s the symmetry on them. I, you know, disabled, activated, reactivated, same vessel interaction, toggled and untoggled all the things like pitch roll, you're on every single Elevon on this craft and every single imaginable combination. And I just couldn't seem to figure it out. Until I stumbled upon a solution, which itself took me a very, very long time to figure out, and it left me with not much time to do anything else for this video, unfortunately. Pitch in KSP can be reset if, you know, the yaw or the pitch lock or whatever you gets messed up. You press Alt-X, and pressing Alt-X would fix the issue for about five seconds. Now, luckily, my keyboard has macro keys, so I set one of my macro keys up to just be Alt X. So and I just throughout the uh, the descent, I would just be spamming this macro to continually reset the pitch of the craft, and that seemed to kind of work. And I could nurse it back to the runway. I don't know why this happened. I tried, like I say, I tried everything. I tried resetting the save. I tried loading another save and then importing my, the quick save into that, and try. I just couldn't seem to get anything to work. So this is my solution. I don't know why this craft is seemingly cursed. Is it because the rear elevons are in a cargo bay? But I feel like that shouldn't matter because all of the elevons did this. So I don't know why this happened. I am tempted to not even bother putting this thing in the description because of the problems with the rear elevons not working when they're in that cargo bay. This glitch, I don't know why it was happening. I don't know. I feel like it's a very simple craft to build from the time lapse, so I would just encourage you guys build this for yourself and hopefully this glitch doesn't happen to the version that you build. I'm sorry, I have no idea. And also I noticed at this point that we were dropping a lot of speed very, very quickly whenever I didn't have the engines turned on, so I reckon having the cargo bay, even though the deploy limit is set to one, having the cargo bay open is creating a lot of drag for this craft. I mean. We do also have a lot of air intakes, and I'm using the ramp air intakes for most of those rapiers, even though the uh, the aero spike would be better. Not the aero spike, the shock cone intake would be better. I just preferred the way it looked with the ramp intakes, and that is literally the reason. So just in case anyone was wondering why I chose that intake, that, that, that that's why. It, it just looked better this way. So yeah, kind of a bittersweet ending, because it was. I don't have much free time at the moment, because I, I'm working in a hospital, as many of you know, and I've said this many times now, so I'm not going to tread any further than that. My shifts are different and I have less time to make Kerbal videos. I'm now talking to you very late on a Friday night. I need to get this video rendered, everything uploaded, all sorted with the thumbnail tonight and then that that's my Friday. So, and then I'm not work again. So, you know, it's, it's difficult unfortunately at the moment for me to make particularly ambitious missions and I do apologize for that guys. Hopefully it won't be too long before I can start doing slightly more ambitious things, but even so, I, I feel like this craft was pretty interesting. You know, I feel like it was a good achievement. I think, you know, orange tank SSTOs on their own are pretty tough to make. I was a little bit intimidated by the prospect of making a double orange tank SSTO that could keep that nice, sleek Skylon aesthetic, but you know what? I think I managed to achieve that with this craft, so I hope you enjoyed watching it perform its mission and hopefully well you know at least i've now created an excuse for future videos we have a useless fuel tank in low carbon orbit we can always go ahead and attach a space station to it at some point in maybe next week's video or another video who knows we'll be doing something at some point i imagine in this channel this won't be the last video i ever upload hopefully so uh, uh not really sure how to uh close that thought off so i'm just going to cut to an end screen we can talk about something else on the left hand side is a link to uh, another video chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. The right hand side is a link to my most recent upload. There's links to things in the description like my Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, merchandise, all that good stuff. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.